No, every time when you do that, it reminds me of the iCarly theme song. We're going live in five, four, three, two, live live, breathe air. Remember that one? Stop, stop, stop. You're going to get Viacom to shut down the video. <laughs> Uh, what are they gonna Fun do with two two lines? You you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. I actually do. I want to share with you something though. I want to share with you something that happened. Actually, that happened to me two days ago. No wait. Yeah, yeah, two days ago. So that happened on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. So after I got off work, mm-hmm. and I was going. And since we were going to record on Wednesday, I decided to join my uh, fam, fam, family to uh, going out to eat. Mm-hmm. And we, we and I was the first one to arrive at the restaurant because it was closer to my job. I, and I kid you not, for the first time in a long time, mm-hmm. I was legit. I was legitly complimented on my looks by a girl. Hey, nice. She quote quote unquote said to me, "It's like no, it's, it's like you look. It's more than handsome. You look genuinely beautiful." And I'm like, "You've been under you've been under these dim lights for too long, haven't you?" <laughs> hey, maybe there could be a. <laughs> well, it was still nice. It was like, and, and my mom's like, "So this is how girls feel. Why do, why are they complaining so much?" Well, hey, this just proves that guys need compliments too. I don't need it. I don't need it. All right, was, all right then you're right. Weird... Eh, you're a guy. What does that mean? <laughs> if a girl says that, it's like, okay, no, she saw something in me that, that I can't see. What does she <laughs> see? So, and oddly enough, though, the thing, the thing was... And I think that's probably something that many women can relate to. They get complimented mm-hmm. in, in a moment where either A, their hair is not that great, or B, they literally are just look like they just came from work. In my case, I was coming to the restaurant with still my work clothes on. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize this, but my shirt had like two small holes in it oh. that somehow that somehow happened. I don't know how. With a lot of... um. A lot, a lot with a with a few black stains because uh, we're working with cars, and and with my hair in a ponytail all day and it gets all messy and curly. Uh, my my hair is just kind of like this weird. It looks very frizzly. So you look like a uh, Maui. A little bit, <laughs> a, a little bit, and and so I was not expecting that. I was I was not expecting it. That was just. That took me off guard for a good few seconds. But with that's everyone. Welcome to the Hack Jack Show. I am the genuinely beautiful, beautiful hack. <laughs> and I am the genuinely lovable Jack. And we're welcome to it will be what, episode six of no, the Hack Jack Show. I think show. it was seven. We're in seven. Yeah, I think it's seven. We're on episode seven of the Hack Jack <laughs> Show. I forget to add forgetful to my little uh, adjective list. And for today's podcast, we're going to be mainly ga- game-centric today. as not much going on, uh, at least an in interest to me, in the realm of comics and uh, f- uh, f- filming and, and film, at least not, not to my, my interest. Um, and I will want to... And just and before we go into a lot of little uh, gaming news that we want that I want Jack and I to go over as quickly and efficiently as possible, I want to briefly mention that over the past week of this recording, uh, Disney, after purchasing of of Fo- Fox, has canceled many many projects that were lined up to either to either be in development or start or in development at Fox Studios, and this includes over, excuse me, over 200 projects. The majority of them are most likely just going to be movies that we never know if they were going to be worth anything. However, there are a few little golden nuggets that are either going to be a blessing in disguise or were movies that uh, it will be a shame not to not to see. So. 
So, so Jack, why don't you listen to the movies that have been scrapped? Have been scrapped. All right then. Let's see. Hit me. All right. So right now, these are movies that I'm gonna list off that may happen, but they're but they're not in active development. So these movies may happen in the future, but could also be canceled permanently canceled. We have the fourth and fifth Avatar movie that may or may not happen. Wait, you mean Avatar is in the, the Blue People or Avatar is in the Last Airbender? The Blue Cat People. Oh, eh, it's fine. We have Bob's Burgers the movie. Oh, that one would have been interesting. A reboot of Garfield, the cat. No, I'm glad. <laughs> and one that I am person and one that I am personally um saddened by a another reboot of Zorro, just entitled just Z. That would have that actually would have been nice, but considering that it was titled Z, that that's a bit pretentious title for me. I was like, that could have been a bad sign, but I would have loved seeing you Zorro movie. Have you seen Nonetheless, that Zorro, have you seen that movie Z? Dragon Ball Z? No, Z. <laughs> that's a terrible title. <laughs> Oh, ima- imagine what they're called this movie like in Canada. They're called it Zed. You seen the movie Zed? A League of Legends <laughs> character got a, a a movie? Wow. <laughs> so, so I hope I would like just to, a Zorro movie in general to happen. But as of right now, those movies listed as as pos as possibilities. Now moving on, I'm gonna list some. The next ones I'm gonna list are ones that are actually scrapped and they are not going to happen and here are some uh notable n- uh notable ones assassin's creed 2 <laughs> we are mm-hmm. we will not be getting another assassin's creed movie i've never seen the first one and i've heard pretty bad things about it so i'm glad i was uh re- i'll say this i remember i recall i believe last year or maybe a few years ago a few years ago my mother uh, decided to take her sister and her mother, my grandmother, out on a, uh, uh, take uh, take them out to ha- uh, to eat to have some to eat some nice food and to go see a movie. When they went to the movies, the only thing they could watch at that hour was literally Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Yeah. And they're like, they're here, so they might as well watch it. And my mom, I kid you not, she she told me that's like the most boring movie she's ever seen. Well, that's kind of sad because the games were pretty hyped, at least for the first three. Jeez. After that, another another notable one, especially if you're if people more into film, will be Chronicle Two. Remember that movie Chronicle about those teenagers who get who get the superpowers, and all all chaos sets loose. Ah, uh, yes, that one movie where you vaguely just told me a plot line that could be fit to any other movie. Because that's literally the plot line. <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember it. Let me let me look it up. Okay. Let me look it up. Well, 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 there's no 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 need to do that. But pretty much, there was gonna be our Chronicle two. That's been that has been scrapped. That's that's eh, no big no big loss. Wait, is that a the, is that a book as well? I'm not talking about Chronicles of Narnia. I'm talking about some, the the actual thing you mentioned. Is that a book? I don't know. Only thing I I don't think so. I all I do know is that. It came out in 2012. It was one of those movies where it was filmed with a shaky cam, so it had to seem like kind of realistic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the and I believe one of the people who wrote, people who either directed the movie, wrote the screenplay, uh, was a up was an up and comer who unfortunately in recent years got got me tooed. That's all I really remember recall from that movie. Ouch. Well, it seems here yeah. that it did decently. Yeah, de- decently. That was going to get a sequel, what, seven years after the movie first one came out? Yeah, totally. Yep. Next one, and next one, so Fox was going to attempt to remake an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Not just anyone, a classic, freaking Commando. 
Have you ever seen Commando, Jack? I've seen clips of it, and uh, it's just like the I find it kind of ridiculous, but at the same time, cool. It is a po- is because it's supposed to be both. Yeah. And they were and they were gonna remake that movie, and it, and except this time, the main character mm-hmm. who most likely would have, would not be played by Arnold Schwarzenegger was gonna rescue his son. It was was gonna rescue his son instead of the original rescue his daughter. Either way. Honestly, the first Commando movie, as cheesy as it is, it only works because of Arnold. Mm-hmm. Take away Arnold, you got a really, really bad B a, an a B B movie a, uh, action movie. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I don't know what they're thinking with that one. Next one, another character who is just as old as or Zorro, a bit younger, uh, Flash Gordon. There was going to be another. A reboot of this of this old series, and it was actually going to be uh, written by the Thor Ragnarok guy. So it's like so as much as I like seeing another Flash Gordon movie, I'm actually kind of glad because if it's going to be written by Mr. Taika Waititi, I don't want to say his name. <laughs> if it's going to be made by that guy, I'd rather not because I'm pretty sure he's going to turn the main character who's a who was supposed to be the cool spaceman going on cool, doing cool adventures? I'm pretty sure he was gonna make him a mockery of some kind. Yeah, do some slapstick on it. Right, and and next one, other one t- of noticing, were the third Hitman movie titled Hitman Two. Wait, did you just say the third Hitman movie? Yep, called Hitman Two. Then what was the second one? Hitman. And the first one. Hitman. Wait, what? <laughs> there was a, it's the third Hitman movie, but it's the second one in this uh, new um, new Hitman movie series. Oh. Or it was going to be, but now it's been canceled. Oh. Good. That first that first one was not great at all. Is it based on the game? Yes. That's why yeah. I mentioned it. <laughs> Just making sure. I was like. Not sure if the I mean, if the people of like the 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 regular people ever heard of the game Hitman. At least our people, our people at least. Next one to mention, there was gonna be an a movie adaptation of Magic: The Gathering. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if it's of course, hopefully, it's about the the cards, like the the characters in the cards, and not really. Like another Yu-Gi-Oh type of movie, but if it's about the characters in the cards, I could see that. This could have possibly worked if is this this could possibly work because if the Warcraft movie show me anything is that that you can that you can at least attempt to make a straightforward movie about whatever like lore that is within this within the game series. Mm. So it could have possibly been a cool thing to watch, but Sally, we'll never know. Next one to me- next one uh, of of notoriety would well, have to be a movie called McLean, and this would have been in a prequel to the Die Hard uh, series. So there's so to give you some perspective, Jack, there's five Die Hard movies, and the sixth one would have been essentially Die Hard Zero. Huh. And it was going to be essentially an origin story about a guy who doesn't really need an origin story. I'd rather just, like, let the movie die hard. But I'm... Yeah! Oh, trust me, the fifth one died really hard. Next one. Here's one that's that we'll both, we'll, we'll both know instinctively. Fox w- was going to make an adaptation of Mega Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Glad that's not glad that's, that is not happening. No, if any Mega Man adaptation you need, I will go with the Mega Man Remix comics or the Archie comics. Either one. Uh, no, I don't want to see a movie. Anime, maybe. Movie, no. We're almost, we're almost done. We're almost done here. Next one. Fox was also going to make a live action adaptation of Play-Doh. The, the clay? Yes, that Play-Doh. Why? 
Because trolls and angry birds were a success. Uh. So I'm glad that it's not coming as that's not being real. A Play-Doh movie? What are you gonna do with Play-Doh? Anything and everything. <laughs> God dang. Let's see. And to quickly run oh, there was also gonna be another Pink Panther movie, but this time an actual animated movie. So that might have actually been something that's fun. Oh, the actual character Pink Panther or like some dude that's been nicknamed as Pink Panther? The actual Pink Panther. Oh, that would have been nice. Yeah, that would have been nice. Uh, And also a sequel that I wish would have happened. uh, The return of the killer clowns from outer space in 3D. That's the title of the movie. I would love to see a sequel to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Interesting. I've never heard of it. You should watch it. You'll have a good time. Another another adaptation of a game. This time, Fox was in development of making a uh, movie about The Sims. Yay. I mean, like, it's literally just, <laughs> it's... like, in its base concept, it's literally just, right now, it's, it's just real people. You you want to see a person walk all the way to a coffee shop, and then just speak gibberish? First of all, it's simwidge. You get it right, and no. I know it's simlish, but I I still <laughs> think it's gibberish. It is gibberish. They just put a label on it. That's all. But they, they apparently and, actually you can actually learn simlish. But do you want to? Like that's even more useless than learning Klingon or Elvish. Well, if you want to get a job as a voice that voice actor for Sims, yeah. <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. Don't listen to that advice. And lastly, the last thing I want to list here was that there was going to be another reboot of an old nine. I kind of forgotten nineties movie. Jack, do you remember a little movie called um, Small Soldiers? Oh wait, wait, like um. Did they was it like these toys that came to life, and there was like two different factions? Yes, that one. Yeah, I remember that one. There was gonna be a there, there was plans to, to reboot the movie, but this time get, check out this title. They were gonna call it Toy Mageddon, and they were gonna have the director of the new Fast and Furious movies to direct it. I actually, I actually would pay to see that. Yeah, I would too. I mean, <laughs> Toy Mageddon. <laughs> Toy Mageddon. That actually would have been something fun to watch. Alas, yeah. it was never meant to be. Thank you, Disney. Thank you. I tell you what I want, whatever they really want. Shh. You wanna? You wanna? You wanna? <laughs> we we Wait, gotta do that, it monotone so we don't get copywritten. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And with that, that's that's I don't. There is a lot. Like I said, there's hundreds of more movies but those are the ones that have that we have any uh, notoriety or any kind of popularity to them so so, some a lot 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 of a lot of misses some hits but overall it was it it was probably it's either gonna this is either gonna bite disney in the in the back in the future or oh crap i just no i don't want to think about that I just I just thought to myself, what if Disney re- rebooted Back to the Future? I don't want to think about that. <laughs> they somehow buy um, Paramount or something. Wait, actually, who owns Back to the Future? New sequel, Back to the Present. So, you, actually, nah. you want to know something? The f- I think one of the actors in the movie who plays Doc Brown, mm-hmm. I think he commented recently that if that if that if he, they did another Back to the Future movie, that was gonna be about climate change. Uh, that's f- yeah, I guess. That's that's fun, I guess. I mean, it's not like how apparently Bill and I just like blames the millennials for something that his generation did. Oh snap! Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Freaking... Have you seen that though? What? Uh, it, what? His episode on global warming. Are you talking about like his this like on his Netflix thing or yeah. is like his original show? No, on his Netflix thing. Now I avoided that like the plague, especially after I saw that um that freaking Dan oh god, 
Don't you? Oh, you may remember that freaking dancing song about gender. Uh, like, okay. Here's one thing I don't get. Like, I love how people are pushing the blame on millennials because he's like, because he specifically blamed it on the millennials saying, I taught you science when you were little. I don't need to teach you this as you're an adult. Meaning, okay, so apparently we're the ones that are pumping out all the gas the from the from the like from inside the earth. We're the ones driving the cars as a as a nine year old. There's a problem with that statement. The thing was the th- the thing was his show wasn't translated in Russian or Chinese, so they didn't get the message. Yeah. Yep. Any case. And again, that's pretty much all I have in in my neck of the woods. And I also like to mention, Mm -hmm. before we move on to our big game stories, that uh, Jack showed me this, that that I did not know that that Marvel was uh, helping publishing uh, League League of Legends uh, comics. And Jack just showed me today. And Jack, have you read read them all up to uh, up to what you showed me of issue four? Have you read Have you read them? Well, first of all, you did mention this before, like a long time ago, but you forgot it. Second of all, um, yeah, I have seen this one. This one's currently, they're currently doing for Lux, which is a League of Legends character. And it's mostly like a little story builder. It's like lore building. I do like it because it really shows. So first of all, just going in a little tangent just to explain League of Legends and especially the world of Demacia, which is that that city. Uh inside Runeterra. Before in the lore, Demacia was just like a random city with justice and everything. It was never really classified that they hated magic. Until this no new Runeterra two point as I'm gonna call it. Where they made Demacia into a city where it's Pretty much, I guess if you want to put it in terms of like D and D alignment, lawful good, and they really, really, really hate magic. Like everyone in that city hates magic. Anyone that's been born with magic, they get instantly thrown in jail once when they're found out. So that's pretty much the lore building for the this comic and it's been te- it, it just tells Lux's story because if you don't know Lux is one of the higher ups inside Demacia and she actually has magic she uses magic but she hides it from everyone else because she doesn't want anyone to know and dishonor the family and all that stuff but yeah it's an interesting comic I like it all right, all right then. I, 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 I honestly forgot that League of Legends have lore to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how that was the thing. I kind of liked the old lore because it it involved the player, because it, it literally involved the player. The players were always called summoners, and they were called summoners for a reason. Because, uh, basically what it would happen is, a le- uh, a legend or a champion they would, sorry, a, le- a champion. They would come in, apply for the the League of Legends for some of it. Yeah, they literally just applied in some way. I forgot how, but they did. That was paperwork, probably. And then after that, once when they're chosen, a summoner can easily just like summon them up into the middle of the battlefield, and they would they will fight out disputes like that. Like if Demacia had any disputes against Noxus which is a, their rival city, then they would go in into the arena and summon their legends, and they summon their champions. I don't know why I keep saying legends. Summon their champions and fight it out. The one that wins will win the dispute. Doesn't matter how fair or unfair it is. I, I, will, I, I want to mention, as I was kind of skimming through the art of the comic, Maybe it's mentioned in the previous issue, or it's in dialogue in this issue. But every, the the way the art the art in the book is pre- pretty is pretty good, definitely above average for 
your typical Marvel comic. My thing is, everything looks like it's happening like at at sunset. So either it is happening within everything that's happening in the comic is happening within like an hour or two, or literally is just there's an eternal sunset in the place. Oh no! Like, the, some, like that whole issue it, is actually during around sunset. Okay, so I want okay, so to make sure because a lot of a lot of comics, modern comics nowadays, um, they like to take that effect of having those type of how how the colors are during like sunrise and sunset, mm-hmm. and have them just appear throughout an entire comic, even if that's not the actual t- type time of day the story is set in. Yeah, it it has to do something with how those natural colors affect the the emotion uh, uh, uh how it affects us emotionally mm-hmm. but and it can, and it and it definitely can't work when you use it right but it's is an overused thing that's you it's an overused coloring technique that's used mm-hmm. and it makes the the a comic appear very um samey looking in terms of panel to panel and nothing's ever strike uh, st- striking and it doesn't have that classic um huge saturation of, of bright colors. Oh, I know what you Never mean. Yeah, I got you. Ne- nevertheless, it's done pretty well. It, it looks better than your average Marvel comic. So that's that's not that. so that's nice. Thanks for showing me that. Now since since we're finally on to game related stuff, let's go on to our game news and we got a lot to go through so jack why don't you go ahead and pick a uh, pick the ones you want to tackle first all right let's go with something small first and let's talk about um right now we're gonna talk about let's see okay let's talk about microsoft's that filed a patent for a handheld xbox device well right here it uh, specifically says it might not contain the actual Xbox logo, but they are having a patent for a handheld device. And from the look of this, it looks like uh, something that you just kind of like, you kind of like clip onto your mobile phone, if I'm correct. And then they have like this way to, oh, this goes back. So... Uh, Hack and I have already talked about this, but Hack, let's remember in E3 they were talking about the Project X Cloud. Now, can you inform the people that what the Project Project X Cloud is? Let's let's see if I'm correct. When and 98% of the time I am 98. The this uh, Project X Cloud. That's probably what they're naming it now, but this is essentially the same type of uh, cloud technology that that Microsoft's been ha- that Microsoft's been having since the launch of Xbox One, and during if everyone remembers the whole controversy is about when the Xbox One was revealed how it was gonna be an online only uh, system. Uh, there was this big talk of how like this how this cloud technology was gonna power up was going not power up but was going to be the way to play video game from play video games from then on via streaming and that it was going to have and and it's gonna have the infinite power of the cloud quote unquote it's basically meaning that there, that you're gonna be able to uh play play games via through a stream like stream like way without having to purchase any any physical media and it was gonna be and since it was gonna be online it was based on how well your connection was on your xbox to whatever internet you had that was it became extremely unpopular when it was a real the xbox one all the way back i don't know eight threes ago it became so bad that Xbox then took away that feature and made made it to the Xbox One that we know now. And now it seems like they might be trying to bring something like that back in a much smaller scale for this little uh, handheld device they're currently uh, made a patent for. And just to just by going on what you're saying, I would I kind of think that that would be the safe bet, just because just to add something, go with something smaller rather than 
already put it on your console, on your main console. Mostly because, as you said, you need a good, you need a good connection to play these games. If you're in a place where you're in the dead zone, good luck playing that Halo 17. You're not gonna be able to play it. And, and, I, I'm, and I'm and I'm look I'm and I'm I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, is there any hmm. demand for like there's I know there's demand for gaming on the go, mm -hmm. but is there even higher demand than the one we know just just based off of Nintendo? Well, like are Microsoft users demanding they want their own switch like device i don't think it's that i i i honestly think it's more like xbox is well keep in mind xbox and nintendo have been getting pretty chummy recently and maybe they're just trying to follow in nintendo's footsteps to see if they can also dip into the whole handheld gaming again i mean that would be nice to see another handheld console out there in the in the markets that's that's true. Although the last time Microsoft tried to copy Nintendo on something, the uh, the Connect was born. Yeah, yeah, that one had a lot so, of issues. A lot of issues. So I, I, I we'll we'll be waiting to see uh, if this patent goes anywhere because a lot of companies like to make patents on stuff, and usually that's made just so that by by law they have they have. The idea is theirs, and no one else can use them. So, so because a patent is made, it does not necessarily mean that this little handheld device is a confirmation that it will be made and, distrib and distributed in the near future. But it's something that most likely Microsoft is, uh, at least in the develop in the early development stages, to see if it's an idea they can actually do. So it'll be nice to see. It'd be nice to see. Uh, they'll de they definitely might have a better control scheme than the Joy Cons. Well, I hope they'll accommodate people with big hands, such as myself. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't got the I don't got those tiny Japanese little Japanese boy hands. I don't got that. I get those freaking Joy Cons. Oh. I get used to them, but still, it's like, like, this feels weird. But yeah. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention something. Just. To you specifically, Hack. So, you know how people were saying that the Connect was pretty innovating, right? In some ways. What or, or like, uh... I felt like some people always said that, I guess the more like the regular consumer always said that there was, oh, it was the first camera-esque uh, like device that you can use and it'll, you'll play games with it. It definitely wasn't the first of its kind, but it was definitely one of the one of the best examples of a, of a uh, camera movement type of thing to actually work when it wanted. So that reminds me of a little game that my dad bought this at a flea market before this. This was before Connect even existed, and he bought this weird little. Remember the remember when you actually had to plug in cables into like the audio and the video. Oh yeah, good times. That's that's the first time I have I ever played Nintendo games without actually getting a Nintendo. So pretty much, <laughs> it was like this little box that had a camera in it, and you would point it towards you. You connect it to the little video and um, audio thing. And once when you turn it on and go into, of course, the the game channel, or like the aux auxiliary channel, you will have like li little different mini games, and you have to hover your hand over them. There was one where you have to like actually, like, keep kicking balloons in the air before they go into the ground. And now that I'm thinking about this, how come those people had a chance to be able to like do something against Connect, don't you think? Uh, no, not not really, not really, because like, most because most likely the thing you're describing was using um was using like very 
not old fashioned, but like probably outdated motion sensor technology. While the Kinect uh, had something that was way more advanced in the sense that instead of locating uh, where. Uh, I'm trying to talk about this. Instead of locating where only specific parts are of your body and trying to register that, the Kinect was looking at every single thing it, that it, it saw, not just you, but also uh, your room as well. Using infrared technology. Yes, which in according to Paranormal Activity 3, I believe, or one of the later ones, you can also use it to see ghosts. Ah, yes, using the Kinect to see ghosts. That would be kind of scary. That legit, that legit happened in the in the one of the paranormal activity movies. You know, that would be kind of scary. You playing your connected like for some weird reason two in the morning. You're in the Player. living room. You you see something funny on your connect. You like it's not working well, so you try to calibrate it. You just see like the in the infrared camera that there's an like another bo- body right next to you. And it sneaks up behind you, and then it asks you, Hey, you want to play some Dance Central? <laughs> hey. And, they, and, 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 and like that, that's how your new roommate's a ghost. Better. Only on, the, only on ABC. Better yet. Hey. What? Want to play some Lucky Hit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Freaking connect lucky hit. That's <laughs> I can see that. It won't be much too weird. You'd be lifting your arm and being like, yeah. <gasps> no, VR lucky hit. That's what we mm. need. <laughs> you actually have to <laughs> get people to play your game, and as you're and just oh my god, I can I can see it now. <laughs> well, now let's get into the next part. We got a lot to cover. All right. All right. Next, next. What's the next uh, topic? All right, next topic. So, the consoles, or very much more specifically, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, and now are now telling publishers, developers, that they need to require they require loot boxes to di- disclose their odds. So, so to show the percentage of what you might of hopefully getting that legendary skin. Versus the common and uncommon odds. So it is a good way to fight it in a way. I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's like, it, it's like you're in the middle of battlefield. Let's say this. You throw a rock at, a, at the enemy soldier and you just say you win. That's what I feel like this whole thing is about, pretty much. They just kind of threw some little lazy threat, and then after that, that's it. Like, what do you think, Hack? What do you think? Here's well, here's what I think. Cause I I re- I quickly read the thing before before we um. Uh, set it up recording and i want i want you i want you kind of i want you to hear hear this out because there was a little update attached to the bottom i don't know if you read that mm-hmm. and to premier to prov- provide more info about this what essentially has happened is well a association called the entertainment software association mm-hmm. they pretty much were bugging the big three tennis and microsoft to uh, and and inquiring of how they're going to fix their loot, loot box issue, and it came to the conclusion of pretty much disclosing odds of of each loot boxes, which I'm I'm cool with. If you I'm cool with there, you know the odds of you getting what you need. So therefore, a you are an an informed customer knowing what knowing what you're purchasing. That's fine. That's, they also they also list out uh, so far company uh, game studios and companies and publishers and developers that have jumped aboard on this and haven't. So here's the ones that are, that have um, that have jumped aboard on this based on what the uh, ESA has has uh, has said. 
This includes Activision Blizzard, mm -hmm. Bandai Namco Entertainment, Bethesda, Bungie, mm -hmm. EA, Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, Take Two, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers, and Wizards of the Coast. Yeah. Here are the companies that haven't made a commitment to include that type of policy. Yeah, I'm reading them now. I can see why. <laughs> 505 Games, Capcom, CI Games, Deep Silver, Disney, Epic Games, Focus Home Interactive, Gearbox, Gung Ho, Intellivision, Calypso, Konami, Magic Leap, NCSoft, Natsume, Nexon, Rebellion, Riot Games, Sega, Square Enix, THQ Nordic, Tencent, and Marvelous. You know what's very odd about the Square Enix one? What's odd about Square Enix? Well, first of all, I'm assuming the mobile versions, like the mobile games, they have loot boxes because I never played them. But I digress. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of Japanese mobile games, like a little the the gacha games, which means if you, for those of people for those that don't know, we're not saying the word gacha as in G O G uh, C H A. We're saying gacha as in G A C H A, which means it's kind of like you put a, you put some money into the little machine, you twist the the lever, and you see what kind of thing you get out of the capsule. Kind of like those type of games, and a lot of gacha games from the Japanese side, they actually do show their odds. So I'm kind of surprised that Square Enix is not one of those people that shows their odds. Well, I, I will say this, that I, I will uh, want to add this in, is that, um, as I read earlier, is that um, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're, it's just there, this doesn't necessarily mean that all these companies are not going to not do this new policy. It's just they haven't made a commitment to do so either not at all or not yet. So so it's something that voluntarily that the company can decide whether to do or not to do. And there's and so there's and there and any company got a variety of reasons. For example, right here, it says that as an update from August eighth that THQ Nordic has said through Twitter that it didn't make a commitment because it was not asked for a statement by the ESA before the announcement was made, adding that it has no games using loot box mechanics and doesn't plan to to introduce any. So there's a lot. So there are some studios I recognize that they either publish or develop games that don't have that don't have any uh, loot box well, mechanics in them. Yeah, I've I've seen some of them. Like, I, I know some of them don't have any sort of loot boxes. But, I don't... And, but, but they don't, and also they don't plan on making any games in the future that will have that. Yeah. And I'm seeing the ones that could possibly say no to this. I am going to call it out now, just because I'm, I'm guessing it. Tencent's going to be a big one. They're not going to, they're not going to do it. I believe you. They're not gonna do it. Remind me what the next song. Oh, I know. The mm, I'm on the fence with them, but I could see that they're not gonna do it either. Can you remind me who Tencent? Who Tencent are again? Who are they again? Tencent is the ones that made PUBG. Oh, I see now. <laughs> and I see. Okay, so. Let me tell you one little thing that made me fall into their trap once, and that was because of the Resident Evil thing. So, when they had the Resident Evil crossover on mobile, sadly enough for everyone else that was that actually bought the game on the computer, on mobile they did a crossover event with Resident Evil, and there was the Leon Kennedy uh, like police officer suit that you can get. So, I like how they do this a lot. I like... Uh, it. It's just so funny. They introduce a luck mechanic. Quote-unquote luck mechanic. So, you pretty much are you're given this, like a... Uh, I think it was like 12 items. You spin the wheel, and it will drop on a random item. Now, first of all, you are not going to win in these things. At all. You're not going to be lucky enough to get 
that the Leon Kennedy outfit on the first try. Some might, but it's a very, very low chance. Because the game is, basically it's all based on that little luck system. Meaning, if you spent enough money, you'll eventually get it. So yeah, Tencent's been doing that. If you spend enough money, you'll eventually get it. <laughs> that, I, 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 that's something wrong with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I ended up trying three times because I had the saved up money that you get from the game naturally. Like, the premium money. And then, other than that, I couldn't, I try, like, I put in, like, $10 to see if I can get it. Didn't work. It just, like, all it did was say, you now have, like, I think it was, like, 70 luck. Like, oh, that means I have a 70% chance. Nope. You just have 70 luck. Whatever that means. Exactly. Whatever that means. So yeah. So I also like, also as a note, I also like to kind of to uh to sh- to show that a lot of the comp- a lot of the game co- uh, publishers and developers that are not that haven't made any commitments to this new policy, they are definitely in the more uh in the more lower end of AAA to even like double A. Developments, they're definitely much smaller than the ones who have signed on. So, I suspect that there's a lot more going on here behind the scenes, and that's in which why a lot of the more bigger uh, games, uh, game companies are jumping in, and why the more uh, middle tier and lower end are not. So, I suspect there's something going more than what we just see in this article. Oh well. Find out more in the future. Eventually, it's gonna rear its ugly head again. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 All right. That story done. Where are we gonna move on next? All right. Next one is the hacking that ha- has been happening in Fortnite accounts. So let's going back to Epic Games. We I'm just apparently in love with Epic Games. Yes. Well, there there they, there is a say there is no difference between love and hate. So. <laughs> and you're the one who picked the game stories. I'll, that's all I gotta say on hey, that. Hey, well, these are the the biggest ones for people that are for like the more general populace that plays Fortnite. So th- does that mean that we all, in reality, we all really love Epic Games? We don't really hate it. It's a love hate relationship, apparently. It's an abusive. Apparently. It's an abusive relationship. A financial. It's, it's you know. Oh, you know what it is. It, is that Findom? You know what Findom is? No, what is it? Findom stands for financial domination. Oh God! <laughs> you can look that up on your no. own. I think I think that's what it is. A lot of people have a Findom <laughs> relationship with Epic Games. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's go talk about this hack. Let's go, uh, uh, I I read I read pretty few over it. It's it's a it's a pretty major hack. So Jack, go on uh, in more detail about that. All right, so. Pretty much, I'm going to, okay, so this is where it started off. There was a a company or like some place called Checkpoint Research, and they are the ones that discovered this vulnerability in Epic Games. So it says here, in the last few weeks, however, Checkpoint Research discovered multiple vulnerabilities in Epic Games' online platform that could have allowed a threat actor to take over the account of any game player, view their personal account information, purchase V-Bucks, Fortnite's virtual in-game, well, which is Fortnite's virtual in-game currency, and actually eavesdrop and record players' in-game chatter and background home conversations. So, just to not make it look like we're putting on tinfoil hats and saying they can listen to us, that part is, that part can... Also, sorry, if you can hear that, it's a truck really ripping up, apparently. So, that part is very true. That can happen. People can listen in to your in-game chatter or whatever you're doing in the background. As long as your computer or your console or whatever has a mic and can pretty much transmit that voice over from your electronic device to another electronic device, 
it can be recorded or eavesdropped. I have seen things in Reddit where apparently there is a website somewhere out there where you can actually look into the home security cameras of people and actually hear them as well in their daily lives. It's very creepy. It can happen. Now, yeah, they, that, is, that is some like that is some like that's like some cyberpunk type of like date data breaching. I've ever heard of one. It's pretty easy to do, but I digress. But but I'm not, I'm not talking about how it's. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm, it doesn't matter how easy it is. I'm just saying that we're getting to the point that we're going to sci-fi territory. Mm-hmm. Regardless, keep going. All right. Now, some people might figure. What might be wondering how this might be happening. So, on the next part of the, on the fourth, on the fourth paragraph, it says these scams previously took the role of de- deceiving player players into logging into fake websites that promised to generate Fortnite V bucks. A commodity that can only, that can usually only be acquired through the official Fortnite store and by earning them, the, them in the game itself. These sites promote players to enter their game login credentials as well as personal information like name, address, credit card details, and via social media campaigns that claim players can earn easy cash and make quick, quick money. So, this before beforehand, like this happened before with the Microsoft points on Xbox. This happened with them a, a lot. Uh they there will be websites out there that that will promise you getting like 100,000 Microsoft points if you just put in your login, like your name and your lot and your password. Now, the only people that would fall for this are pretty much kids. Kids will be the ones that are that would fall for this. It's hard. And unfor- and unfortunately, what's the majority of players on Fortnite? Children, chillins. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so these ha- th- these hackers kn- 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 they know the audience well. Now it says here that now that was the old way. Apparently, right here it says our team's research, however, relied on a far more sophisticated and sinister method. That did not require the users to handle to hand over any login and details whatsoever. By discovering a vulnerability found in the Epic Games subdomains, an XSS attack was permissible with the users merely needing to click on a link sent to them by the attacker. Once clicked, the with no need even for them to enter any login credentials, their Fortnite username passwords could be immediately be captured by the attacker. So, pretty much it's a phishing link. So, for anyone that doesn't know, a phishing link is exactly what it sounds like. It's spelled differently, but it sounds like exactly what it is. It's wanting you to click on that link, because once when you do click on it, any information that your computer or... Yeah, pretty much any information your computer has stored will be given to them, whatever they specifically want. It could be saved passwords. Maybe a saved. Maybe you have Google Chrome and you saved your your credit card information there. They can take that too. And it's pretty much a big problem because a lot of people do tend to fall for these phishing links because they do genuinely seem like the the real thing. Like it doesn't even need to be something like, oh, there has been a problem. It it, it would usually sound like this. There's been a problem with your Epic Games Fortnite, uh, with your Epic Games account. Uh, it has been locked. Maybe they will say that it's been locked because of a security breach. Please click on this link, and that's what it will do. These scammers are getting too good at their job, but of course, all pe- but of course, uh, you gotta be smart enough to know. A little like yeah that's not that's not the case so now this now when this and now with this little not not, not exploit but when this hack, hacking maneuver ha- was discovered something else also happened within its discovery 
And Jack, you also go more into that, please. All right. So after the people have discovered this, there has now been another class action lawsuit uh, being sent to Epic Games for these security breaches that have allowed hackers to access personal information. The class action lawsuit filed by Franklin D. Azar and Associates in U.S. District in North Carolina alleges Epic Games' failure to maintain adequate security measures and notify users of the security breach in a timely manner. The lawsuit states that there are more than 100 class members right now. And I bet all of them are angry parents. Well, rightfully angry parents. And I would say that, rightfully angry. And like, here's the thing, it, well, now that it's gone to a phishing link, it's, or like something that you need to click on a link, it can be, even adults can fall for this. So, here's how I can say, I can tell y'all a good way to find out if a link in your mail is obviously fake. First of all, don't look at the subject line. It might look deceiving just by the subject line. Look at who sent it. Look at that. And even if it says Epic Games dot support at something, look at it carefully. Because I have had, like for example, one time I had a link sent to me that was that said that my Apple my Apple iTunes bill like it sent me an early bill of like something big and i rem i don't remember se uh, buying anything from there so i looked at the email like the actual email it looked like it said apple.support or whatever it said and just to make sure again i went to their website to like i actually went to the apple website i googled the apple website and most of the times these websites they will tell you what their support or what what to look out for their emails, like how it would look like. Keep a note of that, and whenever you have an email that looks kind of fishy, look at the email address. If it's fake, uh, sometimes there are the the companies will give you a link or like another web uh, another email address to send them forward them that email, and they will be able to help fix or help protect people from getting caught in those traps. And with, and with the, and that is with and that is your public service announcement from Jack. So so Epic went in a class action lawsuit and of course like to reiterate what we said when intent when the one Nintendo is going through, this will take some time so any type of uh, update within the a case it uh, has happened. We hope, hopefully, hope, hope, hopefully, uh, Epic Games were able to uh, indiv individually let anyone who is affected by uh, by this hack uh, notif uh, notif notify them so that they can either a help them uh, change their accounts entirely and just abandon that old one, or uh, or find a way to, like I guess, agree some in some sort of settlement within within the within the case. Because I it does say right the it it has been read that when as soon as Epic Games uh, found out about this XSS attack, that they they then went on to um, uh, fix that problem. So they're not so they're luckily have not just been ignoring it. They they have gone on to to fix it but now it come but since that's finished now it has now it's time to fix all the damage it's done to their uh, customer base so we'll so it'll be another uh, story we'll have to keep a lookout for in the next year or so now hopefully this does get fixed soon it will take a while to fix to help those that have been affected by this and some of them might even have to change credit card information. They will have to change the whole credit card, cancel the old one, put in a new one, and change a lot of passwords. Yep, and, and then realize that from now on, they're just going to use those prepaid cards 
Also, <laughs> a a good way to also help you out for in case, like specifically for the game accounts you have, please try to set up a second factor authenticator. Yes, it might be a little bit annoying because you have to put in your password and then put in the password again that's been sent to you from some other maybe a text message or you use the Google Authenticator that that will really help you out and prevent people from actually getting into your account I've had my I once had an e, my EA account actually hacked by some Russian guy I know this it was I know it was Russian because the guy changed the name changed my 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 gamer name to Russian but he was too stupid to change my actual secondary email so I was able to go into the email and I pretty much got my my uh my account back and from there I put it I put in a secondary factor a second factor authenticator so pretty much you will know when someone is trying to hack you or trying to go into your account if they at if they had your correct password like let's say they actually did take your password they put it in but then since the since the computer or since the game itself doesn't recognize your computer or the new the or the hacker's computer it would ask for an authentic authenticator for the code from there, they're kind of stuck. They can't do anything. There might be some ways to go around that, but for the most part, it has been helping protect my accounts. So please try to do that. And the best ca and the best case scenario is, oh, if if your account has been hacked, the best case scenario is that you might. Uh, inadvert inadvertently, uh, uh, talk with a friend you haven't talked in a while, like like with me. I don't know how many times I get a weird message, only to find out that the p person was hacked, and then go then the conversation goes on to, so how have you been for these past three years? <laughs> but, yeah. So that's the, that's the best case scenario, and yeah, and with and it. with that. And and with that, and with that, uh, we're gonna go on to our final s stories of the day. But this is, we call it as one. There is a big, there is controversy within the FGC, the fighting game community. Two pe two people have be have been accused of of inappropriate sexual behavior, and now, and and now they are facing. Back backlash and are losing um, entry into a lot of uh, FGC uh, tournaments. We'll go for the first one that Jack sent to me. So, Jack, why don't you tell me the 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 our our first um alleged um alleged uh, not acute alleged uh, accused. All right, so. Here's the one thing. Let me just give some information how I found this out. So, I would have never found this out if it wasn't technically because of you for showing me the 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 Facebook page Texas Showdown. So, I still have that page followed. I uh, I was looking through my Facebook and then all of a sudden I see a just like a very short paragraph from Texas Showdown, which is very odd because they usually put some sort of article or something like that. So I was reading it and it said something along the lines of a person named Chris Ban was no longer welcomed into Texas Showdown for the next event. They were banning Ban because they wanted to keep people safe and they didn't want anyone to be uncomfortable. So I, I took that website, I looked at it, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll keep this in uh, for the next, for the next Hackjack show. Then again, I get this two, three days later, the same thing 
I, I feel like they copied and pasted. They said that now Leah, Leah Guilty Hayes will no longer be welcomed in the next event. Because they want to keep everyone safe and not have anything uncomfortable. So why were they banned? They were banned because they were they both had allegations of they're, sexual assault. They were being too t- touchy touchy and and not and not enough Lucy Lucy. Yep. And and I read through. Oh, and by the way, Jack, mm-hmm. I just read, I looked at both art at both articles. They were posted on the same day. Yeah. So jeez. And wait, wait, hold on. Oh, but oh, dang it! I was supposed to be posted by the same person, not two different uh, writers. So let's. So I'm gonna go with the Chris Ban. Chris Ban. My favorite. One. Right. So, uh, re- read the article. It seems that he has been banned from. Well, actually, no. First off, he's at. Uh, our Chris Ben is actually a photographer, uh, for the FGC. So he goes to a lot of. He's, he gets paid by attendees of tournaments and, of course, uh, recording or taking photos of the event, you know, for either promotional reasons or for, um, for, or, or for, or to sell, to sell, um, to take pictures for a company and whatnot. Now, mm-hmm. wh- as of now for Chris Ban, it has not been explicitly stated what that, what as what he has alleged allegedly done. The only thing that we can, the only thing we do know, is that pe- that several people have come have come forward to to say that he has that he has um uh sexually ass- ass- assaulted them, and he actually uh, re- did release a statement saying. I wish to express my empathy for, to the victims for the emotional trauma that came from this, Bond said. Our scene has, has a culture in which individuals periodically share rooms which should serve as a safe space. And as a father of a young daughter who's been a strong advocate towards maintaining a high moral code, it is imperative to take accountability for such actions. So, now, and it's a, so he does, so he is taking this a very serious manner serious manner as he should mm. but the only thing that's I would like to know is what is the allegation and would, would this be something that we move on to uh, into the into the rule of law because as we all know or have we all seen it's very easy for for any person most mo- more men to instantly lose their to lose their to lose their job and lifestyle through a little allegation that has not been pro- has not that has neither been uh, uh, pr- proven or disproven. And so here's, here's the thing. So from the the things I've been looking at, mostly Twitter and stuff, it's all he says, she says things. So I can't really take any like I can't trust them. Because, like, of course, I need, we all need evidence to see what happened. I'm not saying that a witness can't be in evidence, but it's just that a lot of emotions are high. We need to just, like, see this kind of, log- what's the word? Not logically, but just, we need to see it carefully. See the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yep, we don't want another Vic Mignogna situation, now, do we? Now, so, first of all, <laughs> uh, from the he said, she said things I've been reading, people have been claiming the reason he has been uh, called out by, accused by these sexual assault allegations is because he's been supposedly groping some of the cosplayers. So, that's what they've been saying, but of course, one person's definition of groping could be different from another person. It could be literal, literally a touch on the shoulder, and someone could say that that was groping. Or it could be as serious as him literally just grabbing one of their breasts or grabbing their, their butt. 
me up and and of course there was no picture or video evidence as far as you have found correct yeah i'm yeah correct yes now i will i will now I will, the, since he has made this statement that i just read that could be since he's not denying it um this could mean other few things one that he's just trying to um, put himself in a more po positive positive light. He, uh, he's trying to put himself in a more po positive light because either a um, he he knows he's done it. He, he he either a he knows he's done it, but doesn't want to explicitly say it. B is trying to, I guess, p essentially appease his appease his accusers, which he should never do. Mm -hmm. Or C, or, or C, he was very quickly to try to uh, protect his name and, of course, his job security that he made the statement. Yeah, and, like, that's the thing where I kind of find this a little fishy. Because he never, den he doesn't deny it. He more along the lines goes as if, he sounds like as if he did do those things. And right here it says that while it is unlikely given his bans from various events in the community Ben next goal is to help the victims heal and rebuild from there so it sounds like as if he he actually did do that and is going out of his way to try and help quote unquote help those that he has assaulted but to me it just sounds like he's trying to save face here which is nor which which is nor normal so, so, so unless we have some sort of, of, uh, verdict of whether or not he has done these things, this, this case could be, could be seen as the highly likely side of sexual allegations, but I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out to be, uh, or unt untrue or untrue. I would be surprised if it turned out untrue, but it is all things to a statement and the, and the low severity of his allegations could be something could 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 make it where it's plausible, because it's not like where he's outright uh, forcing the problems up on others. It could just be at a moment of weakness, decided to be extra flirtatious, and and th and this happen. That could be the case. Hopefully, it is, and it's, and that's just the extent of it. He made just a, he had a bad case of. Uh, judgment on his end, and and he has to make up for it. I don't think it should cost him his livelihood, but nonetheless, it is this. This is, looks like something that could something he's uh, highly likely has done. And the next one, this was this kind of found kind of about kind of funny because I because I have a oops because I have a little history with the other uh, the other um. Uh, individual that the FGC has banned from from tournaments. All right, so this one, <laughs> her name is Leia Guilty. Uh, wait, is that two L's? I think. It's, uh, that. Uh, well, you are you know her. I mean, you can you can say the name. Yeah, yeah. Her name her name is Leia Guilty Hayes. Guilty is spelled with two L's, and. I don't personally know her, but I have competed against against her, and to this day, I and to, and to this day, I I hate Daw Dawson players because of her. <laughs> if Jack hates Bison players, I hate. Oh Dawson God, players. don't remind me. I keep every time when I think about that, it just gives me trauma. It seriously mm -hmm. gives me trauma. That guy just they... like pound me to oblivion. Right. Well, imagine how I found. I just, well, how come I can? I came up with it fine, but you did. Mm -hmm. you, and she, trust me, she whooped me bad. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do. I couldn't do anything. But regardless, so that's pretty much my only interactions with the uh, with this woman. And only thing of note that she probably was like on her. She 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 didn't look go there when when i noticed when, when i noticed her i tried to get like a friendly shake in the hand like uh you know let's have a good fight 
she wasn't even looking. She's like in the floor. She was shaking and vaping. She was shaking and vaping. I was like, uh, I think you should probably get some sleep, but I, I, this is your job. So, but that's all my, all, 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 all life personal experience with her. As the actual story itself, there, it, it, she, she has been accused of ha having a lot of unwarranted and unwanted physical contact, which what which uh, was um, announced not announced or yeah it was announced in a tweet by uh, the attorney or uh, the the combo breaker one of the com combo breaker attorney organizers, and it's and they said that Leah Guilty Hayes will be barred from attending com combo breaker events until further notice, and because of this other. Uh, different uh, tournament tournament organizers have also been uh, banning her from ad from admission as well. She has a and she has a, also been given a, an official statement from her a Twitter account, and she said, as a result of recent accusation towards and personal admission of pa of past instances of unauthorized sexual contact at FGC events, legal TAs will not be permitted to attend. Frost. Oh wait, oh my bad. That's not her personal. <laughs> That's not what she said personally. That's another organizer uh, annou announcing that she's been banned. Here we go. I'm sorry. This is what she actually said. So, Guilty took ownership of the allegations levied against her and was open about how she contributed to the toxic environment within the FGC. I have flirted with a lot of women, and in more than one instance, I made them feel uncomfortable, Guilty said. It's my obligation to take responsibility. I'm not sure what to do next, but taking ownership of my own actions is the first step. I'm going to start right there. First, the, um, I'm going to start right there. Okay, so she admits that she has done was what is the unwarranted and unwanted physical contact between event attendees whatever that could mean mm -hmm. and she then states that she's flirted with women mm -hmm. now <sighs> so let's see did she did she touch someone inappropriately like oh, as in she took well, no, we cannot tell. Did she take a take your hand and give it a good and a give a good old navy handshake in the oh bottom? God. You with the navy handshake? <laughs> did she <laughs> did she did she give attendees the spark? <laughs> did she kiss them without them with without them asking for it? We don't know. As far as just from reading this, she was flirting. Possibly touching someone's shoulder, maybe being and just being a flirt, and because of that, banned. Well, again, we can't tell. Uh, we have to keep it neutral. For me, I'm kind of neutral on this whole thing, just because. I don't know. When you say flirt, it can mean a lot of things. It can be touching it, flirt. No, that doesn't. That doesn't mean a lot of things. That means you're openly being. Yes, it can There's be no verbal. There's no way to interpret that. Yeah, but it, your, your intention is your intention is to be rom to have some sort of ro uh, romantic engagement with someone. Yes, but if you make someone feel uncomfortable, you probably cross some sort of line. I'm not saying I'm not saying the and, and because of that, that's ban worthy, ladies and gentlemen. Ban worthy. I'm not saying the <laughs> verbal part. I'm talking about maybe some being a little bit too handsy. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I'm I, the only reason I'm just freaking. But yeah, I, I'm anyway. just I, I'm having a good laugh here. That's why because like, I mean yeah, it's a, 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 other guy like both Chris Ban and Guilty here. What they have the things they have done or remote or can remote down to possibly uh, make someone uncomfortable. They didn't molest anyone. They didn't do the R A P E. They didn't do any anything that's worthy of a crime, but sorry, we can, sorry we can't allow you to be. Well, here. remember, uh, right now that's how it is for any case, because they want to figure out everything that happened. 
So, like, if the person is, like, yeah, the bad thing is, for Chris fans and for Guilty is that they are going to potentially lose some money. Not the money, but, the livelihood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm saying it's just that the thing is they need to look at everything before they make a final judgment. Yeah, and Im- and imagine how these organizers are going to feel when it turns out that that the severity of these cases are not are like nothing. And imagine how the people might the how the person might feel if they go into the event itself and some guy goes over to them and says you're a sexual hara- uh, you're a sexual abuser and try to try to punch him or hurt him. It's keeping both of them safe in a way. But 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 honestly, beca- but because of this, they're done. They're done. The MTC. There's no saving them. Because once you got got that brand, you're done. You're done with them. That I'm, I'm call- I'm calling it now. I'm calling it now. Both banned and guilty. They're done. You will never see them again in the FGC. Even mm-hmm. if they've been proven innocent or guilty, they're done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But the thing and is, I'd rather be done in the community than be. Inside the community and potentially but then, attacked. But then that label is going to be with them forever. Oh. That's that's how life is, apparently. they Apparently it's uh, guilty until proven innocent. And even then. So, that's that's why I, I get a little up in arms about this. Because it's like, well... This, well, this here's, is the thing. Freaking, here's the thing. It's, well, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to get my thoughts on. trying to get my thoughts on. <clears throat> at the end of at the end of the day, with with both with both people do highly inappropriate, you can argue that definitely. You can definitely argue that. Is it? And you can also we can also point out like something I just I didn't realize is that they were in they were tra- they were pretty much doing their job, so they had to act professional. Mm-hmm. In in Bond's case, photographer. Guilty's case, as a player. Mm-hmm. So, so they it all be seen as doing something that's very un un unprofessional. So, I I can I can see that I I can I can see why people will come forward to tell them come forward to the organizers. And let them know what's going. And let them know what's going on. I can, def- I can definitely see that, especially if it was un- un- unprofessional. Them. I guess what get what gets me heated up. Regardless if they're, regardless if they're innocent or guilty of the things that they that has thrown onto them, and most likely, especially since guilty, pretty much and. Admitted to admitted to it, and then did not disprove it. To to me, it's it, it, I guess it kind of shows just how e- easy 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 it is to say that a per that a person did this, and that's it. That's it for you. And. And it's and and it's proven through a and it's proven through a banana court. Mm. So, and it's gonna have long-term lasting effects, and eventually, that label and that stigma will eventually go away. And I hope for both these people's cases it does. But it. Here's the thing. Uh, I just. Mm-hmm. For me. The reason why I'm not going for either lynch them or protect them is, again, this is way too early. Like, this is very recent news. Yeah. That's why I was telling you to kind of calm down a bit, because we don't know what's happening. That's true, but innocent before proven guilty. Exactly. So I'm saying we don't know what happened yet. So just yeah. take a step back. It's Let's just not be so heated. I just I I just don't want any more a lot of more Vic Mignanas out there in the world. I know. And rec- I know how I feel. And and rec- and recently a- Andy Signor. So yeah, I have to draw a line. So- I have to draw a line somewhere. If it's pr- if it's proven that they've done this stuff, which most likely it is, 
and they will have and, and they have to pay their dues for it you know i i will see that as okay justice has been served exactly so yeah i just don't want to be, i just don't want to i just don't want to be tepid cuz to me that doesn't put me anything i want to be well, wrong. i want to be stressed i want to be so wrong about this i do want to be wrong but here's the thing i don't want to be here's right here's the thing like I don't be right. you just need to wait and see that's all that's the reason I, why i'm not getting heated myself because i also don't like when people call out someone ruin their lives especially for for men their lives will be ruined permanently friends will oust them family members will also abandon them apparently even when they're proven innocent they will never talk to them i'm pretty sure one of the reasons why friends is because they ousted them already and they don't have the balls to tell them i'm sorry yeah so i, th I think i'm just a little uh, we'll, we'll stop right there we're both in, we're both in agreement I'm just more pa I'm, I won't say heated. I'm just more passionate about it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm with you into waiting to see what um uh what uh, w uh whatever appointed um judge or jury has has to say on the matter. Mm -hmm. And with that, let me go ahead and check the let me go ahead and check the time here. And with that, we're gonna go ahead into our. Close of the hijack show. What I want to end on a, on a little downer here. We do hope that there is justice done for Chris Baines and guilty. Whatever, w we hope there is the. We we do hope the best for them in the future. But with that said, we're gonna go. But with that said, going to our closer, Jack. What is your song recommendation for the week? All right. So for my song recommendation for this week. Let's see. I've already done. I've done mystery skulls, done studio killers. Helped out that man with the and in, uh, the indie song. Hopefully you liked it. I wasn't sure if you liked it. Maybe you listened to it or not. I did. It's not my but, cup of tea. If I, it, it's too. Uh, it's too clean. It's too clean for me. <laughs> Need it to be dirty. Tell us. Give me some bad words in there. Uh, let's see. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> but it just was. It's not in my cup of tea. I'll put it that. I'll put it that way. All right. So let's see. This one is from the Knox. That's like Knox, as in knocking on the door. The Knox. It's called Classic. For me, I would personally like. I personally like the original, but the Fetty Wap one, the one that has Fetty Wap, it's okay. But it's called. Classic by the Knox. It features powers. It's a nice song. Now we now we say by by the Knox. Lean meant by like how the word knock. You sure it's spelled exactly like that? Yeah, exactly as it, like knocking on a door. Okay, because I okay. So if it has an X on it, so help me God. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right then. What? All right then. What and. Until the next recording of the pod podcast, uh, anything of noteworthy that you're gonna gonna be playing or watching? Uh, I've been playing a little bit more League of Legends and starting to get back into Rainbow Six. For this week, I am going to keep editing that one video for the highlights. It's taking me a while, just because I already told you this, but I am trying to do a new editing style. Hopefully, people will like it. It. It's one of my favorite editing styles when I watch other YouTubers do it. And, I don't know, I'm, I I hope it's funny for everyone. That's all we can, that's all we can hope for. And, and, on to, and on to my closer. Uh, I finally have started playing uh, Devil, May, Devil May Cry 5. So far, I am enjoying it much more than Devil May Cry 4. To, due to the fact that I can freely move the camera anywhere I want. I swear, those games, those older games, the the fixed camera angles do limit them severely. They're fun, but god dang. So I enjoy DMC DMC five and and all its and all of its killer demonic killer demonic glory. You'll see some gameplay of it in in this episode of the podcast. I did record some some footage for it, 
And as well, I'm, I will be finishing reading Simon Volume 2 so I can have that review up but, uh, before the next episode of the podcast. And as always, well, I to mention that by the time this is up, uploaded, I will have already another comic review up for DC Comics Presents number 50. I, want, I implore everyone to check everyone that, everyone that out. I think it's one of, the, one of the really good Superman stories that everyone ought to read. And with that, and with that, everyone, that closes off episode seven of the Hack Jack Show, and and this is Hack signing off. Bye, everyone.